Thursday, <laughs> sorry, Thursday, February 10th, 2021. Today on the Daily Review, we, I said 21, didn't I? This is what happens Ooh. when you get to take multiple takes. Look at this. This is crazy. Maybe I'll leave that in. Thursday, February 10th, 2022. Today on the Daily Review, me, Joe LaRocca, and Kevin F. Zappa 20 will be discussing the finale of The Book of Boba Fett, as well as kind of our feelings about the whole series. Today on the Daily Review. Edit point. Okay. Um, so, hi, Kevin. How you doing? Welcome to hey, the Joe, show once up? again. Yeah, thanks uh, for having me on. Do you guys have snow? Our oh, yeah, melted. we do. It's starting to melt now, finally. It's, it's yep. gross. It's all like ice and everything. Yeah, it's not, not the best. Um, you're out there in Ohio. Uh, yep. Speaking of Ohio, I still, my uh, Guided by Voices show still has not happened. Yet. I know, I know. And they've released about that recently. They released at least two albums since i booked that show they're like completely just gonna be different music anyway that'll yeah. be fun that's in like march now uh anyway we're discussing book oh, of cool. boba fett i i did an episode after the first one at the first episode i think you know just giving my yep. feelings, you know, yeah you did kind of like the vibe of it um i'm glad i didn't go episode by episode uh reviewing it and um we come to the finale and i think just generally i will say that I, I enjoyed a good amount of it. Although I don't like it as much as the Mandalorian, I would say. What do you think, Kevin? Just a right, general yeah, a, overall. Yeah, side by side, I think I would probably prefer Mandalorian. I mean, it started to become the Mandalorian there a little toward the end, uh, going back. So that that probably brought it up, you know. And then, uh, so overall, yeah, I did enjoy it for sure. I watched every episode every like morning when I woke up after it came out, so. Yeah, so did I. I got, I was... Uh, it wasn't until episode episode five is just like completely about the Mandalorian. And at, at episode four, I remember being like, I don't I don't really care about this show. Like I was like, I, like the idea, I think what we like about Boba Fett from the original trilogy is that he's just like so badass. He like doesn't say anything and he's just got like a great yeah. out, outfit. And you're like, mm -hmm. oh, he's like, you put all of these ideas on him. You're like, this guy's crazy. And just because he doesn't say anything. And then like the more you get to know, like, it being a story about him kind of changing to becoming like woke and responsible and stuff is, is like, I know it's what it's not what fans want to see. If you look on the internet, fans are upset. Yeah. They didn't love uh, this kind or gentler Boba Fett. <laughs> yeah. And so, but I mean, Star Wars fans are also like, you know, you can get new interests. Like these are kind of for kids, you know, <laughs> like it is a little bit True. toned down because a lot of people would be like, he should be better really violent and it's like well, yeah, they're all apparently filmmakers too i didn't realize yeah. that about star wars fans <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. i've been reading and watching some reviews from earlier episodes i was like wow these people man they uh yes, yes they got some I, great ideas after the fact <laughs> yeah yeah it's yeah yeah well yeah looking back upon it, it is really easy to decide things uh also they're not taking into account like the you know it's not just one person sitting there it's like a million different elements going yeah, in right, like right. making this stuff so i mean my initial like i love original star wars like especially a new hope like all those kind of like jawas and tuscan raiders and stuff so when the, the show was about that stuff i thought it was cool whenever the whenever boba fett was in it i, I didn't like it very much i don't think that actor yeah. is very good and his body type not to, i'm not criticizing his body type but it's not what i would expect He's more of like a bulldog. And I always yeah, kind of, sure, you're right. Yeah. That's not what you would expect from Boba Fett. It's right. Yeah, that's a good point. Right. And I don't think there was like a need to keep that guy ca cast that guy. Cause you know, that was the guy who was the clones and the, like, I don't think you had to do that. You could have just no. cast somebody else. Like, I didn't, we don't, didn't even know it was that guy until like halfway through anyhow. So, yeah, and you melt his matter. face off with Sarlacc pit monster gastric fluid or whatever happened to him. And it's like, all right. Like, all right, you yeah, could have just made it uh, anybody. It could have been like Anthony Mackie. It doesn't matter, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Uh, <laughs> that would have changed some things. Um, what do you What do you think about Fennec Shand? That's uh, yeah, I liked her in there. Now, yeah, yeah, I liked her enough. Now I'm glad she's probably not getting her own show or whatever, like some of the other characters are. But yeah. I, did, I liked her. Yeah. And that's Ming Na Wen, who is in 
She was Chung Lee in the Street Fighter movie, the one with. Oh wow! Remember that one? That so up. she she's like fifty two or something. She you mm-hmm. would you wouldn't think she was a day over like thirty one. Um, yeah, she's amazing. She's like a a stunt person and stuff. I don't think she really is getting to show all of her talents in this, but that also, car- some of that stuff was actually her if she would do some parkour or like a flip, right? Or something maybe. And that oh, okay. that that's what helps when you when you do have actors that can kind of pull off some stuff. You can end up with better action sequences a lot of the time uh-huh. because they can kind yeah, of just, sure. you don't have to hide it so much. But then again, she does have like a visor over her. I mean, everybody's got like a helmet on, so you can kind of yeah, it could have been anybody there anytime. It's just cool that she's been around and uh, like that character could come off as really stupid. <laughs> yeah, there's, I like there's not people a lot of that are people. always, uh, I mean, and I don't know if it affects the character or not, but I think maybe it does when they're like, when you see them on the late night talk show circuit for years and you get to know their personality a little bit and then you see them in a show and you're like, oh, hey, it's her. And yeah, so yeah. I don't know if that made her more likable for me or not, but yeah, uh, she's one of them. I don't know. She's always been okay, like on shows and interviews and stuff. You know, she's not just some robot giving boring answers always. Yeah. Yeah. She's good. I think. Yeah, exactly. I saw her on something recently and that's what made me I go, oh man, she's been working forever. Um, so the overall story without spoilers really is like Boba Fett. He's been swallowed by the Sarlacc pit monster. He gets out. I don't fully don't understand how he got out. Uh, and then he lives with natives and he kind of learns the wrongness of his bounty hunter ways. <laughs> and he, and he's gonna, I don't get it. Take it from there. That's as much as I get. I don't get how yep. Java and everybody fits in. Yeah. And like how the, yeah, the huts just sort of, uh, it's like, are they going to be a part of the show, but then not really, I guess. I guess I there's, not, a know, yeah, there there's a power vacuum. There's a power vacuum. Yeah. There were definitely some things that didn't, uh, it's almost like they hit the fast forward button. Like they would introduce something and then all of a sudden it was fully developed. I guess that was one thing. I mean, which is fine as a viewer, I was able to fill in the blanks. It's okay. But there was, it was almost seemed like, like, uh, yeah, I don't know what happened there. There was a, yeah, I don't want to give too much away, but there were some things that just felt like they fast forward. Yeah. I I mean, basically they let, they like, they, the, he ends up becoming in charge of most Espa for which, you know, that was like Jabba the Hutt's territory. And he's basically going to try and rule it more with more justice, you know, more equally than before. And, you know, there's all sorts of kind of, it's almost like a family, a crime family kind of mob thing with all these moving around of other uh, groups who are kind of jockeying for Mm -hmm. power over this planet because it's a desert planet that has spice on it. I'm like, are we is this a little too much like dune that's like exactly what dune is about and it's called spice it's like come on they even call it spice there too huh i know well it's actually in the book it's spice they call it spice but it's 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 a spice known as melange which is at least very scientific Mm, sounding specific spice yes (laughs) but it like even looks the same i was like okay is this are you just on dune are you on arrakis anyway (laughs) that's the dune planet um what do you think about well, my favorite character in this show is Chrysanthem. Oh, yeah. Yeah, That's totally. The like the very first book. appearance, I didn't like him that much. But as he, he made more and more appearances and the show went on, I did love him. Yeah. He's just like this badass Wookiee whose screen presence is like, oh, <laughs> you know, like that. Yeah. Guy, who's in that? Like Shaq? It, the guy's got to be like six or seven, two. Like he's huge. Um. Somebody said it was a WWE guy, Batista. I don't know if that's true or not, but I did tall, hear someone taller than that. It's definitely all right. A wrestler makes total sense. Um, yeah, man, how many shots from a blaster can a Wookiee take? Boy, he <laughs> takes right. like a fucking solid dozen hits, and then every bad guy takes like half a hit. It's a little video. <laughs> it's a little video gamey. That's what the One action felt like. Shot. Yeah, he didn't have the armor or any. Well, I guess he did have some kind of weird like Wolverine thing going on though. Yeah, like that's his, what uh, I. Th- I think maybe that, that that's is, is that why I guess I think that maybe like the justification if we look it up on like SuperStarWars.net or whatever, like, I'm sure it's that like his Wookiee skin and and and. <laughs> And fur sure. has and like it seemed to hit him in that shoulder a lot. The one spot where he had armor, he took a lot yeah, where of they could clearly the put a yeah. He well, he leans in. Maybe they like, like oh, you're right. They maybe magnetize he, right. him. Maybe they magnetize towards that. Oh, I'm trying to call. like all good sorts call. of. That's a very good call. Just making up or bullshit right. for he them to like correct. 
Like it's a thing. Like he can do a thing. And we don't know. Maybe Wookiees are just like maybe their skin is like rock. We don't know anything about them. Unless I mean, we do know they're just furry guys, tall guys. (laughs) Really, really, there's not much going on there. Um, so yeah, the the thing that's interesting is it's almost like on episode four they meet those mods who are like humans who have like modded themselves. And they're all riding these like bumper car primary color scooters. And that was episode four. So and I was like, I don't like this show. This is stupid. Yeah, that was really weird, right? That I just think didn't, everybody didn't... seemed to be like, what this does not fit. And all like, their names were like ski bed and darsh and mommy poos. And you're like, what the oh, wow. is going but... on here? Uh, and then it just like that, it, that right after that episode, it was like they knew they're like, Ugh, this is getting bad. And then they just do a Mando episode. Yeah, and then they right. just straight up do a Yoda, I mean, a uh, baby Yoda, or excuse me, Grogu episode. Grogu. Now, that's what we have to talk about. What was your thoughts when you saw young Luke Skywalker? I thought maybe it was better than uh, the finale of The Mandalorian, I believe, Luke showed up, right? And it looked weird. Like, something was off. This one, very few times, was I like, oh, this is weird. What's going on here? I, think I thought that, it was much better. I do think that this might be like, we're very i mean this is a turning point this is the first time i saw when he came on screen i was like oh shit oh uh, damn i was like there you can see life in his eyes and stuff like they, we're, we're starting to like i wonder this is just no a noteworthy point i think about most noteworthy point about this the whole show entirely is that you really feel like young scoops young skywalker is luke skywalker is there more so than they've ever recreated a person i think it's the best de-aging recreation of a person that they've done so far and they clearly are shooting it in a very specific way so he doesn't have to do big motions and big facial expressions so it's very limiting to a certain degree but i really did not it didn't stand out as weird and every other time especially in the star wars universe you go like when leia turns around you what the fuck just sh- we don't need to see just show the back of her or something you go, Ugh. or grand moff tarkin looks like a video game in one of those and you go, Ooh. but uh yeah that was that was like my biggest takeaway it was like all right we're there we're basically there um and then and it uh, happened quickly right like just yeah. a couple of years ago that was ridiculous to put that in something as big as boba fett and now boom it looks pretty good yeah <laughs> like 2018 you do it for a shot and it's still like questionable and now you can uh-huh. have like a, like a whole scene with a character i don't know it's pretty amazing uh the so the finale itself i it was it was action packed and i would i would yeah. say maybe too action packed I kept yeah, thinking it was going to end. went on a bit, especially with the uh, droid, the spider droid things at the end. Yeah, so they have to I like mean, all that. That stuff was really cool. But yeah, maybe that that seemed like he was fighting them things for 15 minutes or something. <laughs> or yeah, and, and it's, you know, I don't know. that felt vid- very video gamey. You know, it was like you need to do the exact move. And then after you do that move, that weakens the shield. And then you have to jump over him and do yeah. this move. Like it was very like that's true. Like I just get sometimes I get confused. Because basically what happens is they got to like defend the city and, you know, all shit goes awry and there's all backstabbing or whatever. And a certain group of people have to like hang together and and take out a bunch of people, you know, the the opposing team. And they send in these two droids that have uh, force fields around them. And they're like the most indestructible enemy we've seen in the Star Wars universe, which is like a little bit uh, insane. Like the dark lightsaber can't cut through it. What? Right. Yeah. What, what use is that right lightsaber now? That lightsaber is now meaningless. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, well, if right. you just have this shield, like, okay, so just have this shield and you're you, nothing in the universe can like, that was what I was thinking. I was like, oh, okay, well, he's gonna, the lightsaber is going to be able to cut through this because it can cut through anything. Right. Yeah. Nah. No. Nope. Yeah. No, he's Mando said something in there why it wasn't working, but I don't know. No, yeah. He was that like, the enough. kinetic energy is too fast. To yeah. That wasn't enough, <laughs> right. Like, come on. I was yeah. yelling like hit the ground below it, like right at the bottom at dirt level or something, right? Yeah, exactly. Or yeah, yeah, exactly. Or I thought he was gonna like shoot something underground to come up underneath it, or exactly. Or yeah, like or it's the dark saber, just cut through it. Yes, get the dark or saber. get them to <laughs> shoot each other or get them to like overlap and then they're in with one. You know, I, I just thought it was gonna be something like that. And instead it's just like let's just shoot at it for uh, 20 minutes of screen time. And then let's just say a rancor shows up 
there's a rancor in this show. We'll put it that way. And it basically Godzilla's through the town. And you're like, wait, who's the bad guy now? What's going on? Like, it's just, they just are throwing things at Godzilla. What was it? He was part King Kong and Godzilla. Yeah, 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 totally. I was trying to think, like, if he, if he, like, fell off a tower at the end, what they were going to say, you know, because they say, oh, it's beauty that killed the beast. And I couldn't think of any because it's like, it was rank that killed the rank. Or like, what? That doesn't make any sense. Um, I like, I think Amy Sedaris is funny. Like I like all, yeah, yeah. and I like what's his name? What's the guy? I already loved her character. I wasn't yes. real familiar with her. She's just been in tons. You probably would if you. If she's her. She looks very different because her eyebrows are shaved. But she was in um, Strangers with Candy. Remember that show? Oh, okay. That's no. she's the lead woman in that. Okay, well, um, <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah, but she's like a uh, been in comedies and stuff. You probably have seen yeah. her in something. Yeah, apparently um, she knew all about her. Um. So did you. <laughs> oh, what's the deal with? So that guy's from the cartoon, that blue guy. Have yeah, you right, met that yeah. character? In because I know you've watched a few of the a few of the animated shows. Does that character yeah, show I up in any the, uh, Bad Batch? And I did watch. I know I watched something with him in it. I don't know if it was Bad Batch or one of the a little bit older ones. But yeah, I, I did see him before. I was aware of that dude, who he was. I mean, so everything uh, from the cartoon series, whenever they bring into live action, like, I mean, I guess fans seem to be happy, but uh, it, they always seem particularly cartoonish. Like that character yeah. and Rosario Dawson's guy, that uh, Ahsoka Tano, they feel uh-huh. like very cartoony, you know, like just on the screen, but not bad. I don't know. Fine. Yeah, I don't know. what. But yeah, now that they're doing both some animated and some live action, it is going to be weird when they bring them over from from the animated cartoons and then yeah because you gotta but, uh, like get it didn't, accurate I, I didn't really care about that guy i didn't think he was all that tough. i don't know he's mary thought he was scary but i thought he was i didn't care about that guy well i just think you you would have needed to you should have established him earlier because he just kind of like yeah. shows up a little bit late in the game and and, and i kind of was like what happened to moff gideon is he dead did no, I know. Uh-huh. He walked away from that. Yeah, okay, totally so like, are we just like blending everything? Because the next show to come out is going to be Obi Wan, which is coming out in May, yeah. and I wonder if Grogu is going to factor into that. Oh no, wait, it can't be because it's before all this stuff. No, wait, I think so, right? Because Obi Wan is yeah, going to no. be him training Anakin essentially. So Grogu potentially yes. could be a youngster, even younger. No, it can't be because this is. Oh, well, this is after you're this right. Is this is after, after Return of the Jedi. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. this the other stuff is before. Yeah, that's interesting. Now, all right, let's. We are going to talk a little bit of spoilers. So spoilers here. Um. Yeah, I I think that it was stupid that they that they had the blue guy come out and then just like die in the next. Yeah, like, I didn't really care for him. Like, there's just so much deus ex machina you know like you know what that means that's like that it's like when oh i'm about to die the needle couldn't get closer to stabbing my face and then boom something swoops in like and and knocks the thing out it's like uh like you know at the last possible second that happens so much in star wars that it is like you're just waiting for that to happen now you're like all right when's he gonna show up on the thing yeah exactly yeah um, I like I never that. like that when I'm able to sit there on the couch and like yell out what's about to happen. Yes. Like, you know, a lot of times I'm wrong, but this particular episode, it was like, oh shit. Yeah, that was yes. you like this that coming. setup and payoffs are way more um effective when you can't <laughs> when the setup isn't so obvious. Like you just know baby Yoda is gonna do the same thing he's done in every season finale of every show he's been in is like do some little mind trick thing to like Mm -hmm. move something much bigger than him you know you're like okay i get it and so i just think that they need to get away from that a little bit and uh you know every now and then okay sure yeah and 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 just like like this science and i know that you can't you shouldn't like that's getting kind of nerdy about it but like the science of the lightsabers and the and lightsabers and blaster shields and how many laser blasts you can take and how many an enemy can take like that stuff it actually does start to kind of affect the story and now so i'm not just being nerdy about it like um a laser blast you know like it is kind of dumb when like one character can be like and kill five guys and then 
they're like in the worst strategic position. They have guys all like 360 around them, like shooting down on, they have no cover and they're like not even getting touched. It's just like, mm, come on, you know? Yeah. That's how I feel about that. And I, last thing I'll say, and I'll let you, sorry, I'm talking too much, but uh, in terms of spoilers is uh, I think Grogu is Yoda reincarnated because there's that hmm. flashback where it's showing Jedi's getting killed and it's mm-hmm. from the viewpoint of Yoda. Oh, you're talking, okay, yeah, where he was so sitting I there think, watching the troopers come in and watch yeah, the Jedi. Yeah, because it's low to the ground. Hmm. And so yeah, I, we so were, I'm tr- I, I, I don't know, It was because instantly I'm like, wait, whose point of view is this? It has to be Yoda's, I think. Oh, see, I thought it was supposed to be a, like a, a real baby Grogu, like a real, real young Grogu who was uh, there at the temple and somebody swooped in and rescued him. Oh, but You're right, I because he's, he is like 50 years old. Yes, but he, he is. But if he's 50, see, for... this is another science thing. If he's 50 <laughs> years old, but he acts like a baby, then being yeah, 900 yeah, right. years old isn't that big of a deal. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, well, like if you extrapolate right, yeah, it out, how old was Yoda? Any idea? 900, they say. Oh, but again, well, what is a year in the Star Wars? A What's a you year? Year's based be... on the Earth going around the sun. Tatooine has like two suns. What the fuck's a year? Yeah, right, right. So, I mean, yes, obviously you get into all the science and it's moronic, but uh, that puppet of baby Yoda, it like deserves all the hype. It is so adorable and so well yeah, realized. It's like, yeah, um, it's just funny to watch it. So what was your uh, favorite stuff someone, from Lisa? Oh, not wait. that it's like relevant, or maybe it is to the story, I guess, but someone pointed out he was so fascinated with that little ball all the way through Mando and this show is that it kind of reminded him of R2-D2. Like they had a past together. Maybe, and that was, yeah. Like, that was just something I had to see online or I would have never figured that out. Yeah, that would be yeah. great. I heard that George Lucas's original story for the whole six series, all you know, he how he kind of like mapped out six episodes at one point. Yeah, his the the book bookends to it was that it was um, C3P. I mean, excuse me, R2D2 was the only one left in the story. And he was in a like a in a bar telling the story to somebody. He was like regaling the story, the the droid. And he's the connective tissue between all of it. And it's oh, like, okay, yeah. and so it would start with the robot being like, let me tell you this story. But it'd be like a thousand years, and they were like re, you know, that's why it's saying a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. That would yeah, be okay. how he's retelling the story, and I love that idea because R two is like such a cool character until the new movies where he does jack shit. <laughs> he, <didn't do> <laughs> he got <laughs> nothing to do in those movies. Um, what do you what do you feel about uh, Mando's uh, Naboo starfighter? Oh, yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah, because I did like, like that pod like race, the, obviously, from the yeah, prequel. That was that's, cool. So, that's yeah. the first, like, one of the first few things from, you know, they're very reluctant to bring in things from the prequels <laughs> into, like, the new <laughs> show as well. Right. So whenever they do it, you're like, oh, you are taking the cool stuff. Like, I always thought that ship design was really, like, elegant yeah. and made sense for, like, a high empire where everybody's... Uh, hey, you know what's really funny? The guy with the tail, like, the the, the tail thing who's like uh-huh. mm, yes you know he's like an ambassador yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. that shit uh-huh. with him in the fu- in that last episode was great they should have used him even more like him trying to negotiate all that stuff it was that guy's funny as yeah, hell yeah then they even for briefly got him and sedaris together for a quick scene yeah that was, yeah. Kind of, that, that was pretty good there was there were several times i laughed the rancor just tossing a guy that was, made me laugh out loud yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah we are getting we are getting all of our it's like the action the games we used to play in our bedrooms with these action figures are like now just being made into shows oh, like, yeah. oh, what a man. weird crazy garbage time we live in you know <laughs> this much money is going into like basically unoriginal stuff but whatever it's fine and i know uh when i was a kid when i was a kid i had a gamorian guard action figure uh, so i, I kind of love seeing them guys in this show i mean they're i know they're whatever. like they like gave them characters. I don't know no. why I always liked them so much. I they're because they're like they're I think they're like not particularly creatively designed. <laughs> they're just like no, they're like big men or they're something. Just <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's nuts. Uh, I I think that overall I think it's fine. I put it like pretty far behind Mandalorian because Lisa Mandalorian was like a new character that we were exploring. Um, yeah, and everything yeah. felt fresh. Whereas this, it just feels a bit like. 
book him. He should have been a badass for a whole season, you know, mm-hmm. or we, this, the, this should have taken place before these events. Like it should have been taking place like between empire and return of the Jedi. And we're seeing like, not in those characters don't happen. He it's like him doing bounty. Oh, yeah, before mission. he even went in the pit or something. Yeah. And it, that, yeah. and that's that. And that season ends with him going in the pit. So then the second season is his, him being like having some more respect for life and like understanding Please. community and stuff from that. That's that all that's kind of like a bit racially charged too, where it's like, Oh, the natives, they know how to live with the land. And it's a little like, mm. I yeah, I'm being way too academic about it, but this is what nah. comes uh, up. I was just going to ask culture. you um, about, uh, uh, damn, man, it just jumped out of my mind. Um, oh, yeah, I was going to ask you. Oh, yeah, do you think it's pot? Like, yeah, if they would have done that Boba Fett and kept him, the character, sort of in the same, like just the sort of silent, bad guy, yeah. badass type, do you think they could have based a whole show around a guy who barely speaks? Or do you think they have feel pressure to not do that? Like we gotta I give th- him a personality if we're gonna give him a show. I think that they could give him a p- personality, him. and that personality should have just been badass. Yeah, he yeah, should have yeah, been the right, bad guy. Yeah. It should have been a show like about a bad guy. And then yeah. you're like, whoa, what's going on here? Because I mean, maybe that's already kind of what Mando is about. See, they're already kind of double dipping, you know. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, just popped into my head. I think as we mentioned Batista earlier. I don't know how familiar you are, but the Undertaker. He was like a superstar wrestler for 20 right. years. He never spoke. He was just a badass. I don't yeah, want to compare the WWE to filmmaking, but no, I mean, you should compare it to Star Wars and... though, because we're at the same where <laughs> it feels like WWE. You're like, yeah, I know where this is roughly going. You know, mm-hmm. I know this is all fabricated and, and like not based on even real emotions, but just like nostalgia for the past and stuff. So I don't know. There was the the Cantina band was in a couple episodes, and there was like a Cantina oh, band yeah. guitar solo in the first episode. These are <laughs> these are my highlights. I was like. That was cool. Yep. I like seeing Boba Fett in his ship when he got the ship back up and rocking. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And there was, there was tons of like cool moments where I am a big enough fan to where I'm just like, Hmm, little Jawas. I like seeing you, you know, (laughs) like (laughs) walking around. It makes me happy. But, uh, alternate titles for the show could have been, I don't think the book of Boba Fett is the right title. Yeah. Maybe not now. No, there's so few books in the star Wars universe. It doesn't seem like a thing, you know? Like it's got to be like how like Boba Fett changes his tune or something like that. Like, and always good this, morning, uh, Mister Boba Fett. That's what it should be called. <laughs> did, you, did you notice that in the theme song? It's going Boba, Boba. Yes, Boba I didn't notice it to the very last <laughs> one. Same here. And I was yeah. like, are they saying Fett? And then I was like, they're just they're, saying Boba Fett. They're just saying Boba Fett. That's how yep. this show has gotten. This is because the Mandalorian theme is like really inspired. You know, it's like one of those ones where you hear that bling, you know, and you're like, oh, yeah. Mando's showing up. Like, it's really iconic, like a lot of the best Star Wars music. But this one's just like, Boba, Boba, Boba Fett, Boba Fett, Boba. Fett. Boba. Yeah, dude, I'd never <laughs> noticed. It's so funny. I would have never noticed that. Except like for last been... night, I did actually look Princess at all the artwork Leia. and everything at the end. Princess Leia. Princess Leia. <laughs> what are the lyrics to the Boba Fett theme song? <laughs> Boba Fett. Yeah, Boba Fett. They don't say anything. Those are the lyrics. Well, I thought it was just people chanting in some like you know crazy yeah language. totally just a chant a low chant or, do yeah. or whatever maybe right? it yeah. gets maybe it gets more so that you can hear it so that by the end so that you already like the show before you go that it's was stuck stupid. in your head yes yeah, so, we'll so you're you're right COVID. about yeah that grogu thing that makes sense he was like he must have just been like 20 which means you're like a fucking fetus i guess <laughs> you know I like, uh, and i like it better if uh like, because in my mind, like, he had to be Yoda's offspring. Like, Yoda and some other Yoda, female Yoda, had sex, and they had baby Grogu. Well, you're assuming that that's how Yoda's species off. I am assuming. You're right. I maybe they're like, a, maybe he just come, maybe they just divide. I just, in 900 years, I wanted Yoda to have sex at least once in 900 years. I know, and I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it. All right, I think we should we should end there. Is there anything you want to say? Because I, as usual, I talked too much. But no, know. no, that was perfect. I got to. Uh, I really one of the few notes I wrote were uh, the rancor was awesome. Cad Bane was just okay, and mm-hmm. uh, the Demorian guards. I love those little pigmen. Yeah, they're great.